And now let's talk about addressing unconscious bias very quickly. And again, this is related to the question that you asked just now. It's like how, okay, we know we are biased. We know it's very difficult, if not impossible to eliminate bias, but we would like to be more aware uh, about where biases come from and how to mitigate those biases, right? So that's, that's kind of the premise of, of the session today. I think it's important to recognize as well that sometimes, I mean, we all have these biases, right? Our brain is kind of giving us all these kind of signals and reactions to people and situations. And sometimes we jump to conclusions, our prejudices come into play. But sometimes, and this is not rocket science, but it's even harder to control your biases. And basically in situations where you're very stressed, when you're under pressure or rushing, when you're under emotional load, when you're multitasking, when you're tired, when you're hungry, etc. That those are the times when your bias biases might come into play even more in a more accentuated kind of way. So for example, if you doing interviews, if you're running interviews for your company, right? And you're in the panel of interviewers and you have an immediate de deadline coming on after those interviews. You're really stressed because of your deadline. You haven't had lunch. Uh, you had a massive argument with your husband or your wife the night before. You've got all those things into your mind. Those are the times when you are more likely uh, for those biases to come into play because you've got too much dealing in your brain. Um, and the brain is kind of more likely to make you jump to conclusions. So you have to be quite aware of those red flags, those moments when you, your biases might uh, play quite nastily on you. So you, you have to be quite aware of that. And the question is, what can we do to control bias? But before I move to that, I would like to ask you um, which areas of, in your work, you think could be at more risk of biases coming into play. Think about your day-to-day -day work and the tasks that you normally do at work. When do you think that your own biases might play a dirty trick on you um, and that you're more at risk of those biases leading you to make wrong decisions? Yeah, if I can just weigh in here, I think, I think you, you mentioned it earlier on, the, the um, interviewing scenario is a hugely yeah. difficult one because you are operating with very little information. Yes, you have a cleverly written CV and you have a silver tongued candidate sitting opposite. Uh, but all sorts of biases, are, I mean, there are, must be 10 or 15 preconceived ideas that, that, that interfere yeah. with, with correct data processing. I, I, I read a piece of Harvard Business Review research where they did a voice recording of candidates and then within 30 seconds, people already had made up their minds. They had no other information, just based on, based on the intonation of voice. And so that's an experiment. But in real life, we, there are a huge number of pitfalls and biases that interfere with yeah. correct decision making. I mean, definitely. Recruitment is a massive one. Uh, and and now you mentioned the, the voice thing. Um, but um, it is proven, for example, that if you're listening to a presentation, you are more likely to react positively to a male voice than a female voice, for example. Um, and there's also a very interesting example of a particular orchestra in, in the United States. I think it was the Boston Orchestra. I can't remember which one, but anyway, this is back in the 50s or 60s. Um, they realized that, I don't know, 90 or 95% of the players in the orchestra were all men and they were not able to recruit female musicians. And they were wondering if there was something related to biases. So they started doing blind auditions. So they put a panel and when the musicians came in, they couldn't see them. Um, but they still chose a majority of male players. And then what they realized is that a lot of the female players, even behind the screen, they were wearing high heels. So when they came into their audition, the click clack of the shoes triggered something in the brain that kind of 
made a gender connection and, and made the panelists react more negatively. So they moved on and they forced all the players to take their shoes off before audition. And only when they did that, um, they actually ended up with almost like a 50-50 choice of male to female, um, which I think is really, I mean, you think it's, wow, that's kind of super exaggerating, but it's a real case study of an orchestra. Um, and it's only that then when they couldn't see, they couldn't hear anything but the playing, that then they, they started selecting more female players, um, which is very, very telling. I mean, when I worked in Asia, I mean, they don't do it so much now, but a few years ago, not, not that long ago, in places like Malaysia or Taiwan, uh, Singapore, when people send their CVs to apply for jobs, they put, of course, the photograph, they put the date of birth, and for female candidates, they even put their weight on the CV. So, you know, how many kilos and so on. And I mean, I was quite shocked by that. I mean, for example, in the British Council, we have a policy that when people apply for jobs, we don't want them to give us the date of birth and we don't want any photographs on the CV because they say the photograph on CVs already when you're doing the shortlisting is pushing you one way or another. Um, so it's that early on already that your biases come into play. So yeah, recruitment is a big one. Let me see, we've got a lot of comments. Hold on, let me have a look. Okay, communication is an issue. I find that if I struggle to understand someone due to a yeah, language barrier, I tend to be biased and sometimes find myself think the person does not know what they are doing. Yes, yeah, yeah. Look, um, Rita, right? Uh, when I worked in Malaysia, right? Um, I was director of education and I used to have a lot of visitors from the UK, you know, vice chancellors, you know, professors, all these academics. And I used to give them market briefings and this happened almost all the time. We would sit in a meeting room and we would be, I would be giving a market briefing to this vice chancellor and his team and everything was fine. And then maybe one hour into the meeting, they would ask me, oh, your accent, where, where, where are you from? You're not British, are you? Where are you from? I would say, no, I'm Spanish. And the moment I said, I was Spanish, they would start speaking really loudly and really slowly to make sure I could understand. And I had to say, I, I can hear you, I'm not deaf, and I can understand what you're saying. But immediately that confirmation that I was not a native speaker of English, it wasn't bad intention, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't mean, but they just unconsciously they started to speak really loudly and slowly because they thought oh it's a foreigner i have to speak really slowly so there's so many things that come into play when we talk about uh bias i mean racial biases tebojo i mean it's a huge huge issue i mean and who am i to say right the white presenter uh in a place like south africa but it's it's absolutely huge race ethnicity uh, even um, like we said, religious belief, uh, gender is massive, um, social status, you know, economic, socioeconomic status is really big as well. There's so many, so many things, you know, I mean, when we talk about private schools versus public schools, you know, you get a CV and you see that someone studied in the same school as you, it's like, oh, she, you know, she did her MBA at, I don't know, Manchester Business School, like me, you know? And then all the like me things start to play out. But yeah, racial bias in a place like South Africa, but everywhere, look at what's happening in the States right now with George Floyd. I mean, that's all the result of systematic bias that has been toxically ingrained into the systems, into the structures. It hasn't been managed, it hasn't been mitigated. And it's just, it's like a toxic thing that kind of involves everything. So yeah, it's, it's really big. Um, so moving on quick.